morning tradition. We've got a lot to talk about, but first, let's make some coffee. As I start my day, I have one of Marco's videos playing in the background, the one where he explains why he loves being a software engineer. What really resonated with me is the part where he mentions fantasizing about being a barista or any other job that involves interacting with real people, not just a two-dimensional array of pixels. And I completely agree, I often feel disconnected from the real world and find solace in mundane tasks like doing the dishes or cooking a meal. If life weren't so focused on money, I'd love to have a simpler existence, perhaps working in a restoration garage. No meetings, no deadlines, just me, the tools and a car in need of repair. Maybe one day, who knows. Speaking of Marco, a couple of days ago I woke up to a really nice response from him on one of his videos. He mentioned that he subscribed to me. It's an honor. So if Marco subscribed, you should too. I've been coding professionally for almost 2000 days. And one crucial lesson I've learned is to accept change without getting distracted by every new trend. New things are created daily, but not all endure. Many are just shiny distractions. Take for instance the recent events at OpenAI. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the board of OpenAI, which is the company behind ChatGPT, basically gave the boot to their CEO, Sam Altman, who was also one of the initial founders. Ouch. Investors were furious and all the employees of OpenAI were threatening to quit if the board did not resign. As you can expect, this caused a lot of juicy headlines in the tech world. But wait, there's more. Microsoft, being OpenAI's biggest investor, announced that Sam Altman will be joining them in order to lead an in-house team researching AI. After a couple of days filled with drama, OpenAI announced that Sam Altman will in fact be coming back. And somehow, as part of the deal, someone representing Microsoft will be on the new board that will be created. So, what basically happened is that Microsoft, in a very strategic move, managed to secure a spot on the board of the company responsible for one of the fastest growing services ever. Good job Microsoft. But at the end of the day, this was just a very shiny distraction, where a tech giant just got bigger. Now, shifting gears from the corporate chess game, let's talk about something that hits closer to home for many of us in the tech world. The initial panic that set in when people first got their hands dirty with ChatGPT, concerns about job security, the fear that it might swipe jobs from developers, and the general unease about the future. It's understandable to be cautious when technology evolves at such a rapid pace. However, amidst the whirlwind of concerns, it's crucial to ground ourselves in the simple truth. Focus on doing you. Don't chase every new trend or shiny thing. Even if you reach a point where developers are less needed, there's still the crucial matter of trust. And hey, let's not forget the old dogs still doing tricks. Many banks are rocking systems running on COBOL. Yeah, the language might seem ancient, but it's holding its own in the tech world. Kind of like the grandparent who's secretly cooler than you thought. So, will things change? Absolutely, change is inevitable. But it's like turning a massive ship, it takes time. Now, if you're riding the wave of tech evolution and continually honing your skills, you're positioning yourself for success, no doubt about it. The trick is to be adaptable, like a chameleon in the tech jungle. Enough with the politics though. I managed to score a nice deal on something that I had my eyes on for quite some time. Let me show you. In case you're not familiar with this product, it's a stabilizer for your smartphone or a gimbal. With it, you can achieve those really nice and crisp looking shots, just like the ones you saw at the beginning of this video. I recently got my hands on one because, well, I want to step up my game, you know? If you like the video so far and want to see what creative shots I'll take with the new gimbal, make sure to like and subscribe. Pretty please. At work, things are going pretty good, and I want to tell you a story about a junior developer that I worked with on a previous team. But first, I need to eat. Keeping it nice and healthy with a salad and some falafel. So, about that junior. When I was working on a previous project, I was in a team with some junior developers. And with one of them, for some reason, I really enjoyed working with. 
Initially, he was pretty scared of the project, and he also did not have a lot of experience with the tech stack. I know how scary it can be when you switch projects and land on something that's not really your cup of tea. But it's something that you must get used to when you're working in a consulting firm. If you don't know what a consulting firm is, I talked about it in a previous video, you can find it here. So, this junior developer was all over the place. He always had too many tabs open inside Visual Studio, he could never find the code that he was looking for and he was just struggling to understand the code base. Don't get me wrong, this was perfectly acceptable, it's exactly what being a junior means. What I really liked about him is how quickly he would implement something that I would explain to him. For example, when I saw how many tabs he would keep open at the same time, I told him to just keep the minimum needed in order to do his work. And the next time that he was stuck on something, I noticed that he only had 3 tabs open, and he actually told me that the advice I gave him really helped him go through with the task. Another small example is that he was always using the original style of declaring a namespace. Like this. I then showed him that because we were working with c 10, he could use a feature called file scope namespaces. And that turns your namespace declaration from this to this. The advantage of this new syntax is that it's simpler, saving horizontal space and braces. So it makes your code easier to read. And he loved it. Pretty soon he was using the new syntax in the pull request that I had to approve. I was really proud of him, and I was not the only one noticing how fast he was progressing. His manager did too. Well, maybe I had something to do with that, but he deserved a nice feedback. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that being a junior is pretty hard, especially right now, and having a good mentor in the beginning of your career is crucial for your professional development. Trust me, I was lucky enough to have a really cool mentor, and it really pushed me further than the rest. For those of you who already have some experience, do you also feel like a proud mother when you see your juniors making progress? Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Okay, this meeting is turning out to be a long one, so I'll end this video here. Be nice to your juniors. Radish out.